Alright guys, it is now, what time, it's probably after 11 o'clock p.m. here on this gloomy, on this gloomy night here in the end times, in the, well, you will see what kind of paradise Garfield, Texas is tomorrow, uh, here on this gloomy, uh, Thursday night, October 18th, 2018, uh, as I and the other residents here in Garfield, Texas are just <coughs> sitting around waiting to find out whether tonight is our last night in Garfield, Texas, as a 30-foot wall of water uh, comes our way tomorrow. So anyway, you know, what do you do sitting around waiting helplessly for a, a wall of water to come rolling into your neighborhood and washing your house and your life savings away? Well, this is what I'm going to do tonight. Uh, this, isn't a, this is not exactly a rant or a depressed collapsitarian whine. We will see what that all sounds like tomorrow. This is just a little story I'm going to tell um, that I'm pretty sure that October is Cancer Awareness Month that I was completely unaware of. I just got my memory jogged to uh, tonight by, by one of these one of these weird little occurrences and I'm gonna send this rambling monologue out to my buddy and alert tribes member brother JJ and JJ uh, I don't know why this one's for you it's it was weird that I W was actually writing an email to someone else whose name also began with J. And so when I was, you know how you start to type, uh, I type the letter J. You know how that works. And so JJ's uh, choice came up and I saw his, and I saw his name there. I, I have not heard from JJ in months. It's probably been six months. I haven't thought much about JJ in, in months. And so I saw his, uh, his, his name came up. And so I made a note to myself. I said, Hambun, you need to send a note to JJ. And just to find out, you know, what's going on in his life, I, I knew that he was dealing with some challenges. The, I've only spent one afternoon uh, with this man in my entire life. There's some people that you just meet you know, and you literally spend four hours of your life with a person, and you just realize that this is my brother. And that's the story I have. So I, you know, I uh, have, haven't thought of J.J. in a while. Uh, so his name comes up, so I make a note to write a, 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 a letter to him. And I click on the compose box in my email and guess who I have a letter from for the first time in months that had come across that had just come across my email the very second I was sitting down to write an email uh, to this fellow that I, I just love when shit like that happens JJ and I are both students of Carlos Castaneda and uh, this is just just uh, Don Juan, or more likely Don Hanaro, probably Don Hanaro having a, a big laugh at JJ and my expense. But anyway, is that pretty fucking weird or what? So I may or may not, JJ has given me permission to read the uh, read his email to me. Uh, to the tribe tomorrow, and I'm going to sleep on that. But let's just say that in part of his message uh, concerned the fact that he is dealing 
with uh, the, uh, and, and, and JJ gave me permission to say this, that he is dealing with the, the, the challenge in life of the, the person he loves more than any human on the planet is dying is dying and it, and it might actually uh, it, 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 it could end with JJ participating in the the, the suicide essentially of, uh, of, uh, of this person he loves more than anyone in his life. And so anyway when he told me this, I, I wanted to, I, I thought of a video that I recorded way back in the beginning of Humpty Dumpty Tribe about the night that my mother died, back in 1997, when I had, I mean, a handful of uh, subscribers, I, I mean like 30 or 40 subscribers probably, I, I recorded this story and put it out there on YouTube. And so I, I went looking for the story. Now I did find one version of the story that um, that, that, that's on YouTube that I recorded on my mother's birthday, but it was actually a, the, a video that I recorded on Mother's Day, I believe either from 2011 or 2012, that I recorded this video, and it is nowhere to be found on YouTube. That they have that have gone in there and removed it. It was it was. I think it had like 50 views and not one single comment. Um, but, but somehow there was something in this story that was just so subversive and so dangerous to these little YouTube bots that they removed it. So I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. I don't even know whether I'm going to put this on YouTube or put it on my Hambone Little Tail channels over at, at Vimeo and BitChute. I'll probably do both. But anyway, here goes. So, uh, my mother, Elaine Mitchell, was... Uh, I don't know how much backstory to give. Uh, but, but anyway, we're, we're going we're gonna to pick up this story in uh, late spring of 1996. If you, my mother, Elaine Mitchell, she lived in, in Atlanta, Georgia. That was the year of the, when the Olympics were in Atlanta, Georgia, where they had that bombing and all of that shit. So anyway, it was that year, she was uh, 70, well, she was 75, I guess, when she was diagnosed with advanced stages of ovarian cancer, which is a particularly nasty, vicious form of cancer. She was already at, I think, like stage four uh, ovarian cancer. And so after a lot of soul searching and, and, and whatnot, and uh, I, I told my mother I was nowhere weighing in on this. She opted to go for the full tilt surgery radiation chemo uh, option, which I was, I was flabbergasted by because my mother and I uh, had, had you know, we'd had this conversation that if something ever happened to, like, to either one of us, you, you know what I'm saying, uh, what to do. And she, she had been clear to me that she was never going to go this route. And, uh, and, and, and so anyway, I was going to support my, my mom, whatever she wanted to do. So anyway, uh, I, I was very surprised and disappointed, but she made the decision, so I was going to support her. So anyway, 
move up to uh, right around the end of the Olympics. So this was, it, it was late Jan, late July of, of the summer of, uh, of 1996. So say my mother was 75 years old at this point, and we were up at her, I remember the last day before her surgery, we were up at her, um, at our little cabin in North Georgia that we, we had this little cabin on 10 acres up in North Georgia where she had been planning to retire. My mother was a shrink, is what she was. She was a shrink in private practice. And so she was, you know, here she was 75 years old and she was still practicing She in Atlanta. She was spending about half her time in this cabin up in North Georgia, but she was planning, you know, for her full-time retirement up there. So what we were doing that night is, uh, is she and I, just the two of us, we were insulating the open beam ceiling. It was open beams on the cabin ceiling, and we were doing that rollout insulation and blocking it behind this, um, this one by six tongue and groove knotty pine paneling. And so my mother, the, at, my 75 year old mother, the day before her surgery, she was up on this scaffolding. This, this was an open beam ceiling, not, not just a closed in ceiling. You know, it was, it was an open beam peaked ceiling. My mother had climbed up on this scaffolding. She was laying on her back her job was to hold up the boards, so she was laying on her back holding up the boards uh, while I nailed them in. We didn't have uh, a nail gun. This was just hammer and nails that my mother and I were uh, insulating the ceiling with hammer and nails, putting in this tongue and groove paneling up, up on scaffolding. And the next morning she got up and I got on her little, uh, her little uh, lawn tractor, her little John Deere lawn tractor to get out there and mow the, well, about two acres of grass. This was her favorite thing in the world to do was ride around on her little mower. So she got on there and rode around on her little mower and, uh, and mowed the grass cleaned up the place, and I still had work to do, so I gave her a hug and uh, told her I would see her back in Atlanta in a few days. Uh, I was actually living in the cabin. Um, I was working on the cabin to, for, you know, remodeling the cabin for her to move into it. And so she went off to Atlanta, Georgia to have her surgery uh, you know, to get her ovaries removed the next day. And she went off to Atlanta, Georgia, and I gave her a, you know, a hug goodbye. And uh, the, the ne next time I saw her was probably four or five days later, she was in the hospital uh, after her surgery, you know, lying, I, I, I can't stand going into hospitals. And, and she looked like she had had the living shit knocked out of her. And, and I don't remember the actual thing. You know, it went from surgery to, uh, to the radiation, to the chemo. I mean, the whole fucking nine yards and from the day, let's call it, I, I'm guessing it's pretty close, let's call it July 20th, 1996. That, that woman who uh, last I saw of her was, was up on scaffolding, hammering boards and riding around on her lawn tractor. She never got out of bed again. Till the day she died, uh, which was March 14th, 1997, right about this time of night. Uh, and it was, so 
that period, that about, what is that, eight months, w w was an unenduring living hell. Uh, my birthday is September 22nd. I've mentioned this, that I went into a depression that makes the depression I'm in now look like I'm manic. That I, I was literally, I've written the suicide note and I had everything in line and I was, and I was just sitting down to uh, kill myself on my 37th birthday on September 22nd, um, 96, day I turned 37. I was, I, I was literally in the process of committing suicide when the phone rang and it was my sister wishing me a happy birthday and had this conversation, uh, you know, with my sister, and she was saying, you know, uh, Hambone, we really, I really need some help now. My sister's a nurse who lived next door to my mother. You know, we were, my mother was staying at home, and my sister was just saying, I can't do this alone. And, 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 and you've got to move back. Uh, down here, you just have to move from the cabin and just move in, and 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 we got to take care of uh, of mom, and we 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 had two other brothers who helped a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, it it was my sister and I were the ones who were left with the job, so we we settled my mother into uh, so. I moved back. I actually uh, took this trip to New York City with my buddy, which was one of that. That's a whole nother story about the last time I ever set foot in fucking New York City. So I took this awful fucking, uh, I, I mean, just Kafka descent in, into hell in the first week of October. So I moved back into Atlanta, to to Atlanta into the house where I grew up in. Uh, and my sister was literally living in the house next door. I say she was a trained registered nurse. And so starting in October of, 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 of 96, it was pretty much my sister and I were dedicating our lives to basically just taking care of our mother and, 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 and until she died, uh, my sister and I both knew that my mother wasn't coming out of this. My two older brothers, uh, these clueless fucking morons, uh, they, they were still holding out some ridiculous fucking hope that, that we were going to turn this freight train around, which was clearly absurd. So anyway, there started... The, the, the single most horrific, uh, well, November, December, January, February, well, by that time, it was five and a half months of my life, uh, by that, it had already been hell on me. As I say, I was this fucking, I was literally this close to being dead if my sister hadn't called, and to this day, I'm cussing her for, uh, for calling me, uh... So anyway, we, 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 just, we just went into it and, and did what we needed to do. And my, my mother got progressively worse and worse and worse. And I sat there and, 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 and watched this person who I love more than any human being on the planet just, just, just turn into this 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 ghoul you know this 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 healthy vibrant uh woman elaine mitchell i i i just watched in front of my eyes as she just decayed and just wasted away and and was just in in in, in just unbelievable 
just misery and pain and agony. And, uh, you know, it just, it, just got, it just got deeper and deeper. And then it was probably, I don't know, guys, maybe by February we started her in on morphine where it just got to the point, uh, and I actually kind of liked my mom on morphine. She was, she was a hoot. I, I, I remember, uh, she, uh, how she communicated with me. We had her in, in one of the downstairs bedrooms. I was on the opposite side of the house as far in my own little apartment in the back of the house. So what she would do, so my sister would look after her during the day and while I was doing some little slacker job just to make a few dollars and just to get out of the house. And my job is I was the 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, shift. Uh, so how my mother communicated with me was she would ring this little doorbell, this little wireless doorbell that would ring right by my bed. She had no fucking clue what planet she was on, guys. She didn't, I mean, 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, it meant nothing to her. And, you know, I would be trying, it'd be 4 o'clock in the fucking morning and the, and the doorbell would go off. And I remember my mother, one time I went down there and about um, probably four or five weeks before she died, and she was telling me uh, that we were, that she and I, we were going to move to Cozumel, Mexico, and we were going to buy mopeds. She and I, the two of us, were going to move to Cozo, Cozumel, Mexico, and we were going to sell drugs and fish she told me that was the plan that I, that we were going to move to Cozumel Mexico buy mopeds and sell drugs and fish and th this is the kind and then and so then like it was probably 10 to 14 days before she died she started seeing this UFO out on the lawn out outside the bedroom window and uh, you know she would you know she was would point to the UFO and and she would the UFO was broken down and she would point out there and, and I remember her telling me she goes it's not those little ones that bother me you know what she's talking about, you know, the little three-foot-tall grays is what she was talking about. She goes, it's not those little ones that bother me, that they were just the worker bees. She goes, it's that tall one that he's just always watching me, is what she told me. If, if anybody's familiar with the the UFO literature, they, they will know about this character He's sometimes referred to as the doctor, sometimes referred to just as the watcher. If you've ever heard my story, How I Kicked a Space Alien's Ass, because I am a UFO abductee, in case you guys don't realize it. If you haven't heard that story about how Hambo kicked a space alien's ass, that's all another story. You can find it elsewhere. But I knew exactly who she was talking about. Uh, and, and of course... Also, this this guy is known as the Grim Reaper. So the Grim Reaper or the Watcher or whoever was there, probably around the first of March. And so when he showed up, I thought, you know, when the damn Grim Reaper shows up, I thought. Finally, it's it, it's over. That or you know that she's gone. That uh, that, that this this living hell is over, and my mother is finally going to get some peace. But she didn't die. She she just kept on. And it's just like 
it, it, it just went into this this unbelievable horror for uh, and 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 as hard as my sister and I were. We're, we're trying to take care of her. We finally had to break down and get a hospice nurse to help us out. Uh, so we had this uh, hospice nurse move into the bedroom across the hall from where my mother was. And so anyway, uh, it was the night of uh, March 14th. 1997. I have to look this up. I don't know if this was the very night that, you know, that, that goddamn UFO cult called Heaven's Gate. You know, the ones who put on the purple, put on the capes and the purple Nikes and drank the Kool-Aid, those 39 idiots out there in San Diego thinking they were going to hook up with this, with this UFO and fly off to Comet hale -Bop. I think it might have been that very same night. It was also right around the very day that Carlos Castaneda died. It was it was within days um, of of the death of Carlos Castaneda. It, just interestingly enough, but but that comet hail bop was at its peak. If you remember, comet hail bop. Any of you was uh, was up in the sky. Uh, when all this, and so my sister, it was her birthday, the very next, March 15th was my sister's birthday, and she was talking about going to Florida for three days, and just kind of leaving me in charge, well, with the help of the, with the help of the uh, hospice nurse. That 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 I was gonna be uh, in 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 charge for the the next several days, and it was about eleven o'clock at night, and right about this time of night, and and uh, I was getting ready for bed, and, and and all of a sudden I I just I I just couldn't stand it anymore. Guys, I mean, you don't, you don't. If if you have never dealt with taking care of a a, a dying person, particularly someone you love, a parent, a spouse, a child, whatever, uh, there there, you you don't understand the depths of despair and hopelessness and and, and just sheer physical mental, emotional, spiritual exhaustion. So I started walking to my bedroom and I just stopped. And I turned around and I decided I'd had enough and, and that I was going to kill my mother. I couldn't stand it anymore. So I made up my mind right there on the spot that, and, and, and my mother and I had actually discussed this somewhat uh, jokingly uh, over the years, that if, 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 if it ever reached this point, you know, she had told me, you know, describing a scene similar to this, that she was, she had asked me, like, right out of uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, you know, where the big Indian puts the pillow over, uh, Jack Nicholson's face, she, we'd had this discussion and she had actually asked me if it ever came to this, would you please just put a pillow over my face and put me out of my misery? You know, it was, it was just a sick joke. Uh, my mother had a very twisted, black, ironic sense of humor, if you wonder where I get it from. Uh... So I took her at her word. So I decided I'm going to go kill the old lady. And so I, 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 I went down to her room and I was a little bit uh, disappointed to find the hospice nurse was in the room with her. I, I figured the nurse, you know, was going to be in her own damn room. But the nurse was in the 
w- w- was in her room, which I was not expecting. And she looked at me like, you know, like, like, like what are you doing here? Um, and, and, and I said, I don't remember what her name is. I, I, I said, I said, I am sorry. Uh, I, I said, I need five minutes alone with my mother. And, and I don't know if it was a way I said it or what, but this woman, she gets this look on her face. She's out the chair, out the door, and in her room, shutting the door. So I quietly shut the bedroom door, and I just went around to the far side of the bed where my mother, you know, she's lying there. And, and, and I and I, and I'm just looking at this uh, this this creature. Uh, I mean, and 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 I don't mean this uh, otherwise other than just a descriptive term. If you if you are aware of of Marty Feldman's character Igor in Young Frankenstein, that's what my mother looked like. Was was I I I I mean imagine this uh, six months ago this this vibrant uh, woman uh, nailing uh, paneling onto the ceiling and, and and riding around on her tractor she was just shriveled up just this little creature she had had a couple of minor strokes and her mind the corner of her mouth was down you know these what do they call those bell bit bell mal seizures i can't remember what you call anyway uh you know one eye was kind of open one eye was kind of shut and just doing i mean completely fucking zonked out of her brain on um on morphine just laying there and, and 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 I'm just looking at her just thinking oh my you know how did I let this happen to my mother on my on my watch so I I I I I, I just went up to the side of the bed and I and I took her hand this this shriveled up claw that, that used to be my mother's hand and I and I took this 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 talon into my hand and I just uh, you know I looked down in her face I know it little dog I'm gonna tell this story uh, I you know, there was there there was it was it, there was nobody home. I mean, the eyes were dead. It was uh, it was a corpse, going. It it, it was I, I was I was looking at, at a at a corpse with air going in and out of its lungs, and. You know, I did this in front of her eyes, kind of like that. I mean, her eye that was open didn't even blink. And so I'm just sitting there holding her hand, standing by the bed, and I just looked at my mother and, and said, and I, and I said, Mom, I said in five minutes, I said, you need to go. I said, in, in, in five minutes from right now, I am going to kill you. And I and I picked up the pillow from the bed, and I held it in front of her, and I said, "Mom, I said I want you to listen to me. 
I said, five minutes from right now, I am going to take this pillow and I am going to put it over your face and I am going to kill you. I said, do you understand what I'm, what I'm telling you? And I'm standing there with this pillow. And she's just, you know, her eyes rolling back in her head, uh, not knowing what fucking planet she's on. She's been dead for a fucking week, guys. And I just said to her, you know, I, I said, Mom, I, I said, what the fuck are you hanging around here for? I said, don't make me do this. Do not make me have to do this. I said, get the fuck out of here now. That was the last words to my mother. Get the fuck out of here now. And I said that, guys. And she goes, <sighs> And that was it. That was it. <sighs> you know, she just, she just needed my she she just needed my permission to go. She just needed me to give her permission to uh, to go. If I had just given her fucking permission, uh, you know, a month earlier, if I had just told the woman, you know, it, it's time for you to go, she probably would have. And, and I... <laughs> So I'm standing there, I've got her, her claw in one hand and uh, the pillow in the other, and I'm standing there uh, by, the, by the bed. And I'm, and I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking up in the corner of the room and going, going, are you, are you looking at me right now? Are you up there? And, you know, my mother was always uh, uh, completely convinced right up to the day she died that, and I hope to hell she's right, she was right about most things, that, uh, that uh, when you die, you die. It's lights out. It is none of this fucking uh, afterlife. There's none of these streets paved of gold. There's no rolling around in the arms of Jesus. And there ain't no reincarnation coming back as a bunch of little sweet peas, as Iris DeMint would say. It's lights out. And I hope to hell the woman's right. If, if I could be as confident as my mama that uh, when, you, when you die, it's lights out. Uh, uh, it would be lights out for Hambone tonight. Uh, you know, I didn't. There, there was no sense of any any spirit passing out of her or anything like that. And uh, so I'm 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 standing there, you know, next to my dead mother, still holding her hand and. It was just like, you know, thanks for the, thanks for the adventure, Mom. It was a hell of a ride, and uh, and I could actually see. I was right out the bedroom window. I could see my sister's uh, light on in her bedroom, and right as I was standing there looking at the window, her light went out. And she was planning to get up the next morning 
and get in her car and, and drive to her beach house in the Florida Panhandle, which probably is a pile of boards today. And, uh... So I, the phone was right there by the bed, so I picked up the phone and called my sister. And she picked up the phone and she said, it's over. And I said, it's over. It's over. And so I had literally been in the room for five minutes since I walked in there. You know, telling the hospice nurse that I needed five minutes alone with my mother. And so she heard me coming out of the bedroom, the, the nurse. She was across the hall. And she opened the door and, and kind of looked out and, you know, said something about did she need to go back in there and tend to my mother and I said, my mother is dead. Your job is done here. <laughs> and, and I know to this day that that, uh, that that hospice nurse thinks that I went in there and and I killed my mama. And I'm sure that's the story she's telling. But, uh... That's the story I'm telling. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So, Brother JJ, I don't even know you, man, but I love your brother, and uh, and, I, and I feel your pain, man. And with that... I'm going to wrap this up and uh, go put my head on a pillow with my little dog. My little dog. And uh, wake up and see what tomorrow brings. There's a 30 foot wall of water. Heads towards Garfield, Texas. Get out there and enjoy anybody that you still love, people. Bye, guys.